Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Military orchestrates coup in Mali, president announces resignation. Sudanese protesters face state violence. US Postal Services reverses widely criticized changes made under Postmaster General Dejoy and Cuba to start clinical trials of a COVID-19 vaccine. Now for our story, the president of Mali Ibrahim Boubacar Keita announces resignation and the dissolution of the parliament late on Tuesday. The announcement was made following his arrest by the military. Prime Minister Bobo Sisse was also arrested earlier in the day. The country has been witnessing popular protests for the past 2 months against alleged corruption, presence of foreign troops and rising religious extremism. Keita was arrested elected president for his second consecutive term in 2018. Addressing the country on national television, he said that certain elements in the military did not want him to remain in power. He also expressed the hope that there should be no bloodshed to keep him in power. The revolting officers and soldiers led by Colonel Malik Diaw took control over the country's largest military camp in Kati and marched towards the capital city Bamako. Following this, the president and the prime minister were arrested. A large crowd welcomed the soldiers to the city. Following the coup, the military announced that they would put a civilian political transition administration in the country which will conduct fresh elections. The events were similar to a 2012 coup when his predecessor Amado Tomani Tor was deposed by the military. Following Tuesday's coup, the economic community of the West African countries and other organizations have announced the suspension of financial funds to Mali. They have also announced the closing of their borders with the country. The African Union demanded the release of the president and other government officials in a press release. In our next story, several protesters were injured and at least 77 protesters were detained in the Sudanese capital Khartoum earlier this week. This was after the police fired tear gas and attacked a protest rally. The protesters had reached the offices of cabinet ministers to submit a memorandum of demands to Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok. Called the March of the Millions, the rally had been organized on the first anniversary of the ratification of the Constitutional Declaration. This declaration had paved the way for the formation of a transitional government in Sudan. The rally started at different assembly points in Khartoum, Khartoum North and Omdurman and converged near the cabinet minister's offices. The aim of the protest was to hand over a memorandum to the prime minister calling on the transitional government to fulfill its mandate. This mandate was presented to it by the protest movement which brought it to power last year after ousting long-time dictator Omar al-Bashir. Key demands included the formation of the legislative council and a solution to the financial crisis. However, the protesters were met with violence. The coordinating body of the resistance committee said in a statement that it was shameful and unacceptable that Hamdok chose to hide behind the curtain and send a representative to meet the masses. When the protesters, protesters rejected his offer and demanded to see the prime minister, the police fired tear gas and used excessive force to confront them. Many of the injured had to be carried to hospitals and ambulances. Lawyers affiliated to the protest movement who rushed to police stations to secure the release of prisoners were also allegedly attacked by the police. The coordination committee of the Res- coordination body of the resistance committees called on the revolutionaries to close the streets and burn tires in response to the government's shameful and humiliating treatment. They also announced that the Sudanese people would continue its mobilization. In our next story on Monday, the United States Postmaster General Louis DeJoy reversed the widely criticized operational changes made under his tenure to the US Postal Services. DeJoy announced that the USPS will freeze the recently imposed cost-cutting measures until after the election scheduled for November 3rd. This move comes after accusations were raised against him of attempting to face fix the upcoming general elections in favor of President Donald Trump and the Republican Party. In a statement released by the USPS, he stated that all operational changes will be frozen to avoid even the impact appearance of an impact on election mail. DeJoy was appointed postmaster general by the Trump administration at a time of severe financial crisis. A businessman close to the president, he has no experience with the postal service. His appointment is followed by sweeping changes to the agency's operations which involved decommissioning mail sorting machines and banning overtime and extra hours for delivery. These moves were supposedly made to offput several budgetary shortfalls of the service. The matter came to light after the governing board warned states of a particular possible delay in the delivery of postal ballots in time for the November elections. Yet nearly 80 million US voters are expected to be making use of postal ballots to avoid the risks of voting in person in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Concerns of voter suppression and electoral manipulation were then raised by the Democrats arguing that these changes are threatening millions of votes in the country. The Democrats have already pushed for a senatorial hearing for DeJoy to defend the measures he instituted and are pushing for a US dollars 25 billion package to aid the financially beleaguered agency. And finally in today's COVID-19 update the total number of reported cases globally has reached 22.3 million with the total deaths reaching 784,000. The COVID-19 vaccine was under development in Cuba has been approved for clinical trials. The Finlay Vaccine Institute registered the vaccine candidate on the Cuban Public Registry of Clinical Trials. Phase 1 and phase 2 of the trials is expected to begin on the 24th of August in Havana. The trials are expected to be completed by January 21st. We bring you an interview with Dr. Satyajit Rath on the issue of effectiveness of vaccines in the fight against COVID-19.
We're going to discuss WHO's announcement that an antibodies are there for at least three months. Now, a lot of people have interpreted this to mean that after three months, maybe the antibodies are not there in the body and therefore infections can reoccur. And there have been some isolated cases of where people have talked about reinfections. So, Satyajit, antibodies will not be there, does not, that is not what WHO has said. So, if you clarify what they really mean and what are the results they're talking about and what does it mean for vaccine induced immunity as well? Okay, so um, unlike many other times, on this one, I am going to be a little more optimistic sounding than, than usual. So here it's is what a rare happened. change for you, right? Thank you for appreciating it. So, so, so here's what happens. The virus comes in and as we've discussed, there isn't one thing called immunity that is triggered. There's a whole number of interlinked but separate responses of the body that are activated in response to the virus infection. One of those is an antibody response. Now, the data that have accumulated, the evidence that has accumulated over recent months, which is what the WHO uh, note is referring to, have generally begun to show the following. Number one, they are showing that most people who are infected, the overwhelming majority, more than 90% of people who are infected with SARS-CoV-2 make antibody responses. Secondly, the overwhelming majority of these people who have made antibody responses stay antibody positive, meaning their antibodies persist in their bodies for at least months. This is what WHO is saying. This is underlined by WHO because there were initial uh, worries and fears that even in the first three months, there may be substantial fractions of people, percentages of people who will go from being and having antibody to not having antibody. The general indication seem to be that that's not a large fraction of people. What happens after three months is not that everybody's antibody just shuts off. What happens is we begin to get a lot of variation. In some people it will go, antibodies will persist, in some people they will not, in some people they will decline by six months, nine months, whatever. All of this is unsurprising to people who have been studying coronavirus immunity. Remember, this is not coronavirus. This is just one coronavirus. There is a range of its cousin coronaviruses that we are familiar with. The fact that antibodies against any coronavirus infection don't last for very long times uniformly in everybody is not surprising to people. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news developments from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,